So, of course, the Red Bull cost cap saga is still ongoing, and there has been further updates to this whole situation. Let's now get into it after there was a few developments to this story at the US Grand Prix. Now, let's start with this firstly and this came out on the thursday of the u.s grand prix and this was a tweet from andrew benson about how the fia had made an offer to red bull for a or for the terms of an accepted breach agreement for them breaching the cost cap details as as andrew is saying with this tweet uh, as with all issues on this matter are confidential for now now red bull have to decide whether to accept or go before a adjudication panel now we'll get more so in a moment into what the punishment possibly is or could be uh, that the fia has offered to red bull in terms of this accepted breach agreement what a set an accepted breach agreement is basically is the fia notify red bull look this is the punishment that we are going to give you and that you know if red bull um, you know, accept that decision and go into that agreement, then I believe everything stays confidential, but the punishment will be known um, as to this whole, you know, br them breaching the cost cap. But if Red Bull decide to go to the ad adjudication panel, then things would become more public. And Red Bull, um, if they were still given a punishment by that panel, they would have to accept it at that point but that came out on the thursday but we still didn't have any details or you know we weren't really any closer to certain details about you know how much had they overspent by what did it go on what was the offer that the fia made to red bull with this accepted breach agreement let's now get into some of that here now firstly i'm going to start off with this autosport article which for this video, I will have a link to this article in the description if you want to go and give it a read. It's a very good one from Autosport that they put out on Thursday evening, I believe. Uh, it was either Thursday or Friday evening. I think it might have been Thursday evening in the UK. And in this article where they talk about the whole Red Bull cost cap situation, they get into... Um, what they believe is, you know, how much they overspent by and they get into what um, they think it went on. So let me read some of this article. It says, the overall figure involved is believed to be around $1.8 million, which, uh, it, you know, it may say later on in that um, article, which puts the offence well within the minor breach limit of 5% over the cap, or just over $7 million. But $1.8 million is not minor. That is a lot of money to be going over by. And, you know, if you did spend it purely on car development, you would gain a lot of lap time spending that amount of money. But it goes on to say... Uh, the team appears to have fallen foul of several areas of the FIA's financial regulations, which have been regularly updated by amendments that have not been published on its website or made public. Very important to remember that uh, part of the article. Because the FIA, yeah, um, as it goes into you know further detail in this article, they've made amendments to their financial regulations, but they've not actually published it, I don't believe, on its website and you know on the actual regulations on its website so that is key to remember in uh going through this article as it goes on to say one is the allocation of the cost of catering at the factory and at the track in addition there are believed to be redundancy and sick pay issues related to key employees a subject more directly involved with the cost of the running the cars is the allocation of the value of unused spare Parts. This is where things get a bit more interesting. As it goes on to say, um, uh, they were passed to the Heritage Department at the end of the season for use on show cars and any testing of the 2021 model in 2022, which falls outside of the cap restrictions. And then it goes on to say, in the bottom three um, lines, or yeah, not three lines, but you know, more than that just the bottom bit here 
uh, it's understood that the FIA issued a clarification in June this year, three months after teams submitted their documents about how such parts were to be considered by teams. I'll get more into that in a second. Uh, and then it goes on to say, finally, there is also a UK-specific tax issue, which is believed to be similar to a procedural breach involving Aston Martin. And then goes on to say, if Horner does speak on Friday, he's expected to give further details on the team's position in all areas. Now, when it says about how, um, when, you know, when it gets into the um, cost of running the cars, uh, is an allocation of value or the value of unused spare parts. And then it goes on to say, it is understood that the FIA issued a clarification in June of 2022 this year, three months after the team submitted the financial documents um, about how such parts were to be considered by teams. Basically, what that means is Red Bull, you know, based on what the rules were in the late part of 2021, they believe, and it appears by the regulations, were doing the right thing in terms of unused spare parts. Because you can see in this article, it says they were passed to the heritage, uh, heritage department at the end of the season for use on show cars and any testing of the 2021 model in 2022. And again, it says which falls outside the cap restrictions. So Red Bull at the time of doing that, if that is indeed what they did. And I have to stress as well, this article, obviously the people writing this article, they will be a lot closer to the people who are in the know about this situation. So they're a lot closer to the truth than people like me. Uh, but, you know, they don't know still for sure what is actually going on. So this is, you know, the, the closest thing really we've got to the full facts of the situation. But if it is true that, you know, Red Bull, um, you know, had unused spared parts and they were passed uh, to the Heritage Department for use on show cars and, yeah, any testing on the 2020 mo 2021 model, as it says there, and then the FIA, you know, a few months later and three months after the teams have submitted their documents, issue a clarification, which is essentially a... Um, a, a change in the regulations in this area and i don't see what red bull really could have done about this um it's really the fia's fault the fia should you know stop issuing clarifications and should just be you know very clear and black and white with you know what is and isn't allowed and if that is what has caused and um, maybe the majority of why red bull have gone over the cap then you can't really, if this is true as to why, or the reason why Red Bull have um, gone over the cap, you can't really blame Red Bull massively for this. This is more of an FIA issue. And I've got to say, the FIA, no surprise, have acted pretty poorly in this whole saga, which I'll get onto a bit more in a moment. But yeah, um, if that is true, you know, this whole unused spare part thing and the FIA issue, issuing a clarification after it was too late, then I think the FIA is more at fault there than Red Bull, I have to say. But now let me get into an automotor and sport article, which gets into uh, some more details about the possible punishment and what is going to happen with Red Bull going forward now this article i believe came out on the friday of the grand prix weekend maybe the saturday morning not entirely sure exactly when the article came out but it was definitely before i believe qualifying got underway in austin and this is what they had to say and of course automotor and sport they are very reliable in their reporting i think they were the first to report this whole thing um, you know, Red Bull and Aston Martin being over the cap for 2021 before the FIA even confirmed what was going on. And of course, they have plenty of people quite close to the people in the know. So some of their information does actually turn out to be the absolute truth. So let's read some of their article, which I'll as well post in the description of this video. So what it says here is the more interesting part happened off the track. Everything revolved around Red Bull's offence in the budget cap um, affair. The racing team has known for a week what punishment it faces. 
allegedly, they say, a deduction of 25% of the wind tunnel time for the coming season, plus a fine. Apparently, so if I go back to this, uh, this tweet, um, confirming the news that the FIA had made an offer to Red Bull for the terms of an accepted breach agreement, that is basically what this article is saying, is that that is what the offer was in terms of a punishment. A 25% reduction in wind tunnel time for next year plus a probably sizable but nothing major type of fine um, so that's basically confirming what the offer was there by the fia and then it goes on to say a retroactive punishment with a point deduction for 2021 should be off the table red bull though is said to have disagreed with the cost cap administrator's proposal the process then continues <clears throat> And then it goes on to say, in Austin, team boss Christian Horner contacted FIA President Mohammed bin Suleim, uh, supposedly to make him a counter suggestion as to what punishment one could live with. Which I've got to say, this whole, you know, the FIA trying to negotiate a punishment with the team that have broken the rules is so, so wrong. It is totally, totally wrong. And it just does scream, unfortunately, corruption. If a team has broken the rules, there should no, uh, there should not, sorry, be any room for negotiation with that team that has broken the rules as to what their punishment is going to be. The FIA, they are the regulators of Formula One. They should be, you know, giving Red Bull what they think is the pro appropriate punishment, and then Red Bull have to accept it. There should be no room for negotiation. This is just, yeah, it, it, a really terrible thing that I've seen with this whole situation and then it goes on to say uh, on the outside this gives the impression that guilt and atonement can be negotiated like in a bazaar i'm not quite sure what that means but uh, uh yeah <laughs> obviously converted from german to english this article and it says however ben Suleyem can act uh, or can at best act as a neutral observer in the matter the process is entirely in the hands of independent examiners and judges should a hearing occur when the two parties cannot agree. Apparently, Horner can't decide for himself how he wants to either. The scope of the case is so great that the Mataschitz family must be consulted in any case. Of course, um, you know, when this article was published, I think it was a day later when it was announced, sadly, that Dietrich Mataschitz had passed away. And of course, rest in peace to him. But yeah, um, that's how serious this whole case is. And then it goes on to say, finally, this is not just about the Formula 1 team, but the image of the brand. This has reportedly already led to some delays. From the FIA's point of view, it is up to Red Bull how quickly the process ends. If an agreement is reached with the cost cap administrator, the file can be closed immediately. If it goes to court, the, mat uh, the matter can drag on for another six months so that's what it has to say there and they also i think in a different article went on to say maybe the day after this other article came out that um the fia and red bull reportedly have agreed or come to an agreement on the punishment but because of the news about dietrich mataschitz's sad death they decided to postpone the announcement so we are probably gonna get an announcement and i really hope we do get an announcement um at the mexico city grand prix this weekend say in i don't know three or four days from now that would be ideal to be honest but again i really don't like this whole negotiating you know the the fia the people that run the sport negotiating with a team that's broken the rules as to what the punishment should be it doesn't it, well it unfortunately in this case is working like that but it should not work like that you know if you look at other instances in f1 where for example you know the stewards will give penalties to certain drivers and teams yes they bring those drivers and teams in to hear their side of the story but they don't negotiate with them what the pun uh, penalty or punishment should be they hear their side of the story and then they give whatever punishment they think is fair that is how it is supposed to work in F1. But yeah, this just screams of corruption, unfortunately. And yeah, that's uh, all of the updates pretty much we have had to this story so far. And we hope this weekend in Mexico, 
we will get further updates to this. Let me know, guys, in the comment section down below. What do you think should be the appropriate punishment for Red Bull, given the information I just went through there? And just what do you think of this whole situation so far? Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. But until my next video, it's been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.